Welcome to this beginner's introduction to Lightform Creator software. In this tutorial, I'll walk through everything you need to know to get started projection mapping using Creator software with your Lightform AR projection device. Lightform Creator is content creation software that runs on PC or Mac. A perpetual license for the software is included with the purchase of a Lightform device. I'm using the LF2 Plus, but you might be using another Lightform device like the LF2 or the LFC kit. I've already paired the LF2 Plus to my laptop over Wi-Fi and I've successfully made a scan of my scene. So now I'm ready to dive into Lightform Creator. First things first, I'm going to do a quick tour of the interface. This main view in the center is known as the artboard and it gives us an interactive view of our canvas where all our content is created. The size of this artboard is determined automatically based on the resolution of the projector you used for your scan. Any content that goes outside the edges of the artboard won't be sent out of the projector. Inside your artboard, you will see your scan. When your Lightform device performs a scan, it uses structured light patterns to gain an understanding of your scene from your projector's point of view. This understanding of your scene includes color and depth information, which gets stored in the scan. Lightform Creator can use that data to quickly select objects and apply dynamic effects. If you are using a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out of the artboard by using Control or Command and your scroll wheel or you can pinch on a trackpad. If you hold down space, you can pan around. You can also pan around using two finger drag on a trackpad. This section up here above your artboard is called the toolbar. This cluster of tools relates to editing modes. These are masking tools, and these are content creation tools. We'll be covering the editing, masking, and content creation tools in more depth later. Here on the left, we have the Layers panel, which displays all of our surfaces in a list. If we twirl down the arrow to the left of the surface's name, it expands to reveal all the assets assigned to that surface. These assets consist of effects, generators, videos and images. You can select a layer at any time by clicking its name in the list. You can rename layers by double-clicking the layer name. This list can be reordered by dragging layers into a new position in the list. You can also lock layers so you can't make changes. You can turn a layer's visibility on and off. And you can duplicate layers by right-clicking and selecting Duplicate. Depending on what is selected at the time, the Properties panel here on the right will populate dynamically with parameters that are relevant to the selected layer. You can deselect all active layers by clicking in an empty area of the interface. If you do this, you will see the properties associated with your scan. In your scan properties, you have the option to make a new scan or tweak your existing scan. You can also access these properties by going to Edit, Scan Properties. You can access the Asset Browser here. Using these tabs, you can switch between assets you have brought in yourself, known as project assets, built-in assets, and stock assets. If you want a real-time preview of your artboard on the scene, you can choose Preview. Clicking the down arrow next to Preview brings up the Preview Preferences. In here, you can choose whether you want to see masks or your cursor position visualized as crosshairs in the preview. You can also set the quality of the live video stream. There are other preference settings in here that relate to the artboard and interface. These preference settings can also be accessed by Mac users by going to Lightform Preferences and Windows users by going to Edit Preferences. Once you have finished editing your project, you can publish it to your Lightform device here. Down here is the Slides panel. Slides are like different versions of our composition. We will talk more about slides later in the tutorial. Here are some basic controls where you can play, pause or stop playback of your slides. What are surfaces in Lightform Creator? 
think of surfaces like smart groups into which we put our content like images, videos and effects. All the masks and warping we apply on the surface also applies to everything contained inside the surface as well. How do I create a surface? Surfaces are created using these masking tools. We use these tools to define the areas we are interested in augmenting. This is the pen tool. It can also be activated with the shortcut P. This is used for manually defining vector paths by clicking out a series of points. You can finish a shape by closing it or using enter on your keyboard. Once we complete a mask, a surface is automatically created. If you click and drag when creating a new point, it will create a Bezier curve. You can go back and alter this shape. Click and drag on a control point to reposition it. You can change the tangent of the Bezier curve by adjusting these control handles. By holding Alt or Option, you can manipulate one handle independent of the other. You can convert a point you have already made into a Bezier curve by holding Control or Command and clicking and dragging on the point. Using the rectangle tool, which can also be enabled with the shortcut R, you can click and drag out a rectangle to use as a mask. Hold shift to make a perfect square. You can enable the ellipse tool with the shortcut E or by right clicking on the rectangle icon. Click and drag to create an oval Hold down shift to create a perfect circle. The magic wand tool, which can be accessed here or with the shortcut W, can intelligently select areas of the scan with similar color or depth. At the moment, the tool is using color to differentiate different areas of the scan. If you click on a colored area, the tool will look for other adjacent areas of a similar color and include those in the selection. Selected areas are overlaid with red. If you have connected selected, the magic wand tool will only select areas that are adjacent to where you click. So if I use undo to remove the selection I made a moment ago, and now if connected is unselected, the tool will consider the whole artboard when it's deciding which areas are eligible to be added to the selection. If you change the tolerance, you alter how strict the tool is when it's considering which colors to include in the selection. If you lower the tolerance, only colors that exactly match or are extremely close to the original color will get included. Higher tolerances will allow more and more similar colors into the selection. We can also differentiate areas by disparity. In this mode, the magic wand considers the 3D depth information in the scene and selects based on the areas that exist at a similar distance from the projector. At the moment, the tool is in add mode, which means we can click additional pixels on the artboard to capture more areas in our selection. If you feel like you've included too much in your selection, you can shift into subtract mode to remove areas from the selection. You also enter subtract mode by holding alt while you make your selections. Once you're happy, you can click create surface and a masked surface will be created with adjustable vertices. Modify edge lets you grow or shrink the selection by a given number of pixels. The Fit Accuracy slider lets you decide how precise you want your mask to be. Masks with higher accuracy will hug the shapes in the scan more tightly, but require more points. 
The magic brush, which can be called up with the shortcut Y, operates in a very similar way to the magic wand, except that it's more akin to painting in the selection with a brush. You can adjust the brush size to suit the area you are trying to select. If you'd rather take a more manual approach, you can use the brush tool, which uses the shortcut B. With this tool, you can paint in areas to select as you would with a pixel mask in a graphics editing application like Photoshop. Once you have created a mask, you can use various editing modes to change or refine it. You can enter edit mode using this icon or with the shortcut B. It's also the mode you enter by default if you exit another tool using Escape. You can edit the vertices of just one surface or select multiple surfaces and make edits to them at the same time. You select multiple surfaces or layers by holding Ctrl or Command and clicking to add or remove the layer or surface from your selection. You can move multiple vertices at once by holding shift and clicking to either add or remove them from your selection. Or you can drag out a selection box around multiple vertices. Like with the pen tool, you can convert linear points to bezier curves by control or command clicking and adjust using these handles. Hold Ctrl or Command with Shift and click on an edge to add a new vertex point on the path. You can delete a vertex by selecting it and pressing Delete on your keyboard. Move mode allows you to move a surface or layer and also scale and rotate content layers. Access it on the toolbar or with the shortcut M. In this mode, you will simply see a bounding box around your content. Click and drag inside the bounding box to move your selection. If you select an asset layer, you can scale by clicking and dragging on the corner of the bounding box. You can constrain the proportions of your layer by holding shift while you do this. If you hover close to the bounding box, your cursor will become a rotation icon. If you now click and drag, you can rotate your selection around the center point. If you hold shift, you can rotate in increments of 10 degrees. The perspective warp tool allows you to give 2D content the impression of having 3D perspective by adjusting its corners. This is also sometimes known as corner pinning. Select a content layer and click the perspective warp icon in the toolbar. Drag a corner of the layer and release it to pin it in place. The Perspective Warp tool doesn't just deform the content, it applies a 3D-like perspective to the layer with a hypothetical vanishing point. We can see this at work if we move the content with the Perspective Warping applied. There are some perspective-related controls to be found in the Properties panel when a content layer is selected. By default, content appears flat without any deformation. If that content is within a surface that does have perspective, you can use Fit to Surface to automatically make the content adopt the perspective of the parent surface. If you know that, going forward you want all content within this surface to adopt the same perspective, you can select the parent surface and toggle on Auto Fit New Content. Now all content you place within the surface from now on will have the surface's perspective without you having to use Fit to Surface on each one individually. Clicking on this icon or using Ctrl or Command P calls up the Asset Browser. There are three types of assets which can be accessed under these three tabs. Project Assets, Built-in Assets and Stock Assets. Project assets are media items you have imported into the project yourself. Lightform Creator supports many common video and image formats, but the developers recommend video encoded with the H.264 codec in an MP4 container. You can either drag and drop your own media into the Project Assets panel, or use the Choose File function. 
Make sure you have your chosen surface selected, then either double click the asset or use insert content to add it to the surface. You can use Lightform Creator's built-in assets, which include effects, generators, images and videos. You can search for assets and view thumbnail previews inside the browser. To add a built-in asset to a selected surface, either double-click the thumbnail or use Insert Content. You can modify an effect or generator by selecting the layer in the Layers panel list. Its properties will appear in the Properties panel, where you can adjust the parameters to dial in a custom look. All asset layers will also show properties like opacity, blend mode and transform values which you can edit here in the properties panel. What is the difference between effects and generators? Effects use scan data to produce context-aware graphics that are congruent with shapes in your scene. Generators, on the other hand, do not take scan data into account and are simply procedurally generated 2D graphics. Lightform Creator also provides access to a catalogue of stock video and animations which you can browse and download from. View what's on offer by clicking the Browse Catalogue button. Find an asset you want to use and either double-click it or use the Download button. The clip will download and appear in your Stock Assets tab. To add it to your selected surface, either double-click the Stock Asset or press the Insert Content button. Since you have now downloaded a local copy of this stock asset, it will appear here in your stock asset library for all future projects unless you delete it from your computer. Add text using the text tool, which can be enabled using the shortcut T. If you have a surface selected when you enable this tool, a text layer will be added to that surface. If no surface is selected, then a new surface will be created containing the new text layer. Now you can edit the text properties in the Properties panel and do things like change the text content, font, size, colour and alignment. I would recommend not resizing the text here, but instead scaling the text layer and then in Edit mode, enlarging the corner points of the surface to accommodate it. At the moment, all of our layers are sat on top of one another like pieces of paper in a stack. We can't see layers that are sat below another layer. This is because the blend mode is set by default to normal. What are blend modes? They affect how the layer's pixels blend with the layers below. Each of these 19 blend modes in the list represent a different mathematical calculation that is applied to the pixel values, producing a different blended look. This icon off to the right of the blend mode dropdown is the Inherit Alpha icon. If you use Inherit Alpha, then the upper layers in the list will only be visible where there are pixels on the layer below. This is most commonly used to add visuals on top of text. Slides give you a way to store variations of your composition and play them in sequence with set durations and transitions. Surfaces exist across all slides. However, the content you put on a surface is stored uniquely on a slide. So each slide can feature different visuals on our surfaces. In a nutshell, surfaces are global across slides, whereas content like effects, generators, images, videos and text are slide specific. If you edit the mask of the main surface, it updates globally across all the slides. 
but if you edit the content on a surface, it will only update on that slide. You can create a new slide with this plus icon. To delete a slide, right-click the thumbnail and choose Delete. You can also duplicate the slide. Double-click on the slide name to give it a new, unique name. When published, the slides will play left to right in sequence. You can reorder the sequence by dragging and dropping. If you hover over the thumbnail, you can set loop behaviour here. You can also toggle whether your slide is shown or is hidden when you publish your project. The slide duration is shown here, which is set to 10 seconds by default. This determines how long the slide will play for before moving on to the next slide once the project is published. You can change this in the slide properties. You can also tell the slide to loop here and specify if you want the slide to fade in or out. If you have a video layer on a slide, you will usually want to advance to the next slide only once the video has completed. You can do this quickly by selecting the video layer and, in the video properties, click Set Slide Duration. Now the slide will have the same duration as the video. Once you've finished editing your visuals, you are ready to publish your project to your Lightform device. Do this by clicking the Publish button. Unlike with the real-time preview, once you have published your project, you no longer need your computer. Your project will run directly from the device itself. Only one project can be published at a time. If you publish a new project, it will overwrite any projects previously on the device. Publishing involves rendering your project to video and then uploading the project to the device. Publishing with Lightform is done over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. This can be done with or without an internet connection, but your Lightform device and your computer must be connected to the same network in order to publish a project. How long a project takes to publish depends on how many slides you have, how long they are, and how many assets they contain. The developers recommend publishing projects under 60 minutes in length for the LFC kit and 20 minutes on the LF1 and 2. You can speed up your publishing times by installing a fast GPU, which will decrease render times. You could also switch to a faster network or connect your network with an Ethernet cable instead of Wi-Fi to decrease upload times. Note that publishing is not the same as saving your project. To save your project, go to File, Save Project. If you want to archive a full backup copy of your project with all its associated assets, use the Archive Project feature. Here you can specify a location for your archived project folder. Once your project is published, you can access playback controls on the control page. You can stop playback, pause, play, and skip to the previous or next slide. If loop is enabled, playback of a slide will repeat until you move on to the next slide manually in here or with OSC controls. You can see a list of published slides. The slide currently being played is indicated with a blue outline. To switch to another slide, click on its name in the list. Here on the control page, you can also switch between different Lightform devices. You can see information about your device here. These tools are useful when setting up a new device. You can show a camera stream, turn a test card on or off, or start the pairing process. If you are experiencing any issues with your hardware, you might choose to restart the device. If you are using an LF2, you will also have options here to adjust the focus and change the orientation of the projector. You can also set up OSC mappings here. A Lightform setup has the ability to make visuals react in real time to sounds it detects in its environment. Assuming you have a sound input that is correctly set up and calibrated, you can enable audio reactivity here. There are two modes, basic and advanced. Basic offers you a simpler interface for adjusting audio reactive filters. Gain filters react to the audio's volume. 
Choose the filters you want to apply from this list and set their intensity. Speed filters speed up or slow down with the presence of sound. Within the filter sensitivity settings, increasing the attack makes the filters react more quickly to increases in sound. Increasing the release makes the filters react more quickly to decreases in sound. In advanced mode, you have more settings on offer to fine tune how your filters respond to audio. So that's your beginner's introduction to Lightform Creator software. Feel free to leave your comments and questions down below. Please consider leaving a like on this video and sharing if you think it could help someone else. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and checking out my other projection mapping videos.